you are in town, you're at the venue right now. Are you excited about playing tonight in St. Catharines with Royal Wood? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're, we're sort of halfway through the tour at the moment, and uh, so far so good. <laughs> we're in St. Catharines tonight, and then uh, Kingston, Montreal, and Ottawa the next two nights. Great. And are you actually going to play a song with Royal Wood on stage? or I'm, I saw a clip of you guys uh, doing a song together, so I just didn't know if you are going to be on stage together or not. Yeah, or you can know, you say uh, that? <laughs> we haven't done that so far. We okay. haven't done the duet on stage yet. Okay. Um, but it may happen later in the tour. Great. Now, when I saw you, I guess it was four years ago. Is that right? 2014? You came into TAPS, and I didn't know what I was getting myself into, and just I was hypnotized by your your voice and the ability, your songwriting and everything. And then you were so down-to-earth and personable about talking with people on the patio and just actually making time. You don't see that too much from rock stars anymore. They actually hang around after the event and talk to people. I saw on Facebook or some, some social media the other day, hey, great meeting you type of thing. So is this... Uh, is this the, something that you like to do personally often or absolutely you know i feel like uh especially in this day and age we all spend a lot of time in our own little virtual worlds and part of what i think allows me to keep going day day after day being on the road especially you know it can get a little lonely and so just making those connections with people everywhere you go and actually meeting people face to face is really rewarding and how many people you got on stage with you tonight? So tonight we're just doing a pared down acoustic version of, of what is usually uh, a full band operation. Um, but we are supporting Royal Wood. And, you know, usually what that means is uh, that you do a sort of pared down version of your normal show when you're doing, uh, doing the opening slot. Um, so we're happy to do it. And it's really a, a minimal kind of version of, of what we normally do. So I think last time you were down, was it Ben that was playing guitar with you? Uh, that sounds right, because it was so long ago, uh, it's hard to recall. <laughs> okay, and so uh, can you name who's backing you up tonight? Yeah, so uh, it's Adam Bowman is on the percussion, and uh, is playing percussion rather, and uh, Jeff Eager is on guitar. All right, and you'll be playing songs off the album Playing Chess, I take it? That's that's right, yeah. So okay. my, my album, Playing Chess, came out a little earlier this year, um, and it was my debut album, and it featured songs originally recorded for Chess Records out of Chicago back in the 50s and 60s. And uh, so, yeah, so we're going to be doing some of that beautiful classic, uh, classic music tonight with our own spin on it. Um, and also, we're previewing some of my original material, which will be... <laughs> which will be on the new album um, and that's coming out in the middle of 2019 and that, that album will be entirely my original music and to back you up on the album playing chess you had some talent there I think I saw Questlove Captain Kirk Douglas oh, yeah. Dap Kings it, that was, it was just a crazy crazy time getting to work with uh, with all these legendary musicians and as well as Betty Wright uh, who uh, has had you know a decades-long singing career herself, and was the vocal producer of the record, and uh, just a great cheerleader to have along the way to, um, in making the record. Because this was the first album that I had made, and uh, yeah, having this amazing team around me was was really uh, a pleasure and, and an inspiration. Now I don't know why I'm surprised to find out that this is your first album. Uh, how have you been releasing music? I know you've been really active on YouTube. But I, I just thought that most of these songs that you were playing came from an album, I guess. But uh, talk to me a little bit about how you've gotten to this point, distribution, and and how it's led to you know opening for Royal Wood and some of these other great guests that you've had on your on your last album. Well, I'm working with S Curve Records out of New York, uh, which is a wonderful little boutique label um, that's affiliated with BMG. And uh, they just have been so supportive. We've been working together for the past couple of years, and they've really helped uh, to, to bring me to the, to the next level and connected me with people like Questlove and people like the Dap Kings and Betty Wright and 
uh, just a great team over there, as well as Awesome Music, which is a Toronto-based boutique label. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really surrounded right now with some <laughs> really high-level players in the industry that have helped to, to sort of get me on the road. We've been all over Europe this year. Oh, I shouldn't say all over, but we've been over much of Europe this year. Right. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back again in the new year. So this is actually our first little um, Canadian tour this year. We've done a few one-offs here and there, but, uh, but we're really enjoying hitting the road in Canada right now. Good. Looking forward to seeing you tonight in St. Catharines. You're at the First Ontario Performing Arts Centre opening for Royal Wood. And what's your strategy been uh, to this point? I mean, to get to this point, because, you know, I, I'm really well connected to the local music uh, scene here in, in Niagara. And I'm constantly surprised by the level of talent that really just doesn't get the exposure, doesn't get the the sales or the performance fees or what have you. I know it's really tough these days in a, in the Internet world. So what has your strategy been to get to where you are now uh, as far as, uh, you know, distribution and just exposure and period? Well, I think the strategy is the same for all of us, uh, the ones who have had some success and those who haven't, and that is just working really hard and, you know, uh, meet networking as much as you can and, and getting out and meeting fans and doing doing the hard work because some of it means playing, uh, you know, uh, playing all over, not, not, not only just in the big cities. It means, you know, long drives. It means putting right. in your time. And so I think that's part of – but that being said, all the people who haven't – had the opportunities that I've had, uh, many of them anyway, are, are doing all of that. And so I think some of it is just luck. Um, mm. Some of it is, uh, you know, just having met, met uh, the right people who could introduce me to the right other people. Right. Um, so I wouldn't say that there's something specifically unique about my strategy, um, but I would say that the, you know, the number one thing is just to, just to <laughs> be willing to put in the hours. And I've been at this for a really, really long time. So... Um, so I'm really proud of, of the success that we're having now. Yeah, and when you say a really long time, when did you, when did you start down this road? Well, uh, I started singing professionally when I was in high school. Um, I think I was about 14 or 15 when I got my very first singing singing job. And, uh, I mean, I wasn't touring at the time or anything, but, uh, you know, I was in a band in my early 20s, and we toured a little bit in Canada, and some of that is just building your road readiness and uh just be, yeah I, I mean I, I don't think that there is a, a formula really i think everybody's hustling and some of us have some luck yeah and some of us you know uh but everybody's hustling in this business it's, it's not easy well, i just saw a, um, a video i think i've probably seen this before because i've kind of r unconsciously ripped off the uh mon the uh saying cellar sessions because <laughs> we broadcast from the cellar here and i often have uh, you're in a wine cellar I i'm like oh man i thought it was original with that one and just today i see your <laughs> cellar sessions and it's called cellar sessions I was like oh i thought it, i thought it, i came up with that apparently it was probably in the in the background uh of my mind but uh do you have certain venues that you like to play i know that you know i, I read that you know, um, North by Northeast was one of the first festivals where you were kind of discovered, for lack of a better term. Do you put uh, a lot of emphasis on festivals and or what? what's kind of like your favorite uh, venue to play? You like the small little clubs? You like the performing arts centers or? Well, I would have to say that it's really been a luxurious sort of experience stepping out of the uh, stepping out of the bar scene and the club scene and being able to play in these gorgeous theaters like like where we are tonight in, in St. Catharines, um, uh, like the First Ontario Performing Arts Centre. We just arrived here for the sound check and uh, just checking out this space. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, and is. there is something about these uh, soft seat theaters that uh, you can't quite put your finger on. Um, there, It's both intimate and also feels uh sort of grand and luxurious and the sound in here is great and uh generally the the techs and crews that you work with in these kind of venues are sort of at another level and mm -hmm. so it's really been a treat doing this tour with royal wood and uh playing soft seat theaters all over ontario and and we're going to be going to montreal as well 
And did I hear you picked up a guitar and you're learning to play? I do, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> so I will occasionally, you know, post a little video of my latest uh, addition to my <laughs> to my songbook. But uh, I singing is really the only thing that I excel at. And uh, but I, I am I am playing a little bit of guitar these days. Awesome. And I'm a I, I want to be a musician, but I also consider myself lazy and undisciplined, which I've heard you refer to yourself to how you stay uh, sharp if this is something that you kind of lean towards. Well, I would say I'm lazy and undisciplined when it comes to things that I'm not already, oh, you know, that I don't already okay. have some skill at right, or some gotcha. innate talent for. Oh, okay. And, you know, uh, I, I've been singing since I was a little little baby, basically, and, and I was kind of good at it even when I was, you know, four years old. And so there was never the kind of period as has been with guitar or oh, snowboarding gotcha. or some of the other <laughs> difficult tasks that I've tried to learn. Um, there's that period where you're just doing nothing but falling down. And mm. um, so I think it does take a certain level of discipline to persevere in the face of that, which right. is something that I definitely struggle with. Now, Weed and Wine is one of my favorite videos. Can you tell me a little bit about the song and the shooting of that video? I think it's just flawless, and it's just you know, well lit and well shot, well edited. I mean, the sound's awesome on it. And is is that a cover as well? That is not a cover. No, That's okay. an original so. piece, which right. um, was actually released. Uh, there was a limited release just in Canada several years ago. I did release an EP, uh, a self-titled EP, and uh, what's going to be happening is that song, as well as a couple of other um, of my vintage classics, will be reworked and will appear on my forthcoming album. Uh, so that's, that'll be out in 2019, and uh, Weed and Wine is one of the songs that will appear on that album. And you're going to rework it? Yeah, it'll be reworked. I mean, I sing the song a lot better now than I used to, okay. and, huh. uh, and I sort of have a different vision for the aesthetic of it. Okay. Um, I, I'm really proud of, of that version, and, mm -hmm. and that video was, was done. But I definitely have... Uh, I've grown over the years, and I, I have a different vision for it now, so I can't wait to, to share that. <laughs> Great. And uh, tell me a little bit about your take on covers, because, man, you really own those covers. You make them your own. You're not trying to play it like the original, you know, note for note and, and the cadence and things like that. So what's your, what's your, uh, your angle for when you, when you start doing a cover? My my feelings about covers are that they're the most rewarding as a performer and as a listener when it's really different from the original version. Um, and there are some exceptions to that rule, but I would say for, for myself, uh, that was one of the guiding forces behind playing chess was that we would take songs and sort of flip them on their heads. And so a song like Rescue Me uh, that appears on the album, which you know, originally is this sort of wall of sound kind of production and uh, it really flies by quickly. We, we make it extremely minimal and slow it down quite a bit. And so it comes across uh, very differently uh, on our album and, and at the live show. And, and the same thing with Chuck Berry's You Never Can Tell, which, you know, again, it sort of flies by at this frenetic pace. And by slowing it down the way that we did, it takes on this whole other color, and you really hear the lyric a lot more clearly. Uh, so, so yeah. So I guess my take on covers generally is, you know, go big or go home, and uh, do, do something original. It's not, especially because it's not your story. Um, put your right. own spin on it in some way. Um, Ain't no sunshine is probably one of your more popular videos. I mean, you've got many videos over a hundred thousand views now. That's wow. You know, you got to be proud of that but uh the bill withers tune seems Thank to be you, one of I your, am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you've got to, you're coming up on what, five thousand subscribers that's not oh, that's gr unbelievable i mean come on uh but uh ain't no sunshine was there something special about that one or you think it was timing or is it the you know ain't no sunshine has always been one of my very favorite songs Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I guess I just finished saying how you should do something dramatically different. And then you're bringing up a good example of one that I guess we didn't do something 
crazy different than Bill's version. Mm. Um, but I guess just the fact that it's being sung by a woman somehow right. put a different spin on it, so it felt different to me. Uh, but that song has always been one of my very favorites, and I think, you know, it's got so many views because people, you know, they go into YouTube and they search the name of that song, and uh, lucky for me, my video comes up once in a while, <laughs> so I've really benefited from the general love for that song um, and for Bill Withers. I mean, Bill Withers is one of my very favorite writers, and, uh, you know, right, right now as I'm sort of finishing off the songs to appear on my album, I sort of end up asking myself at times, like, what would Bill do, you know, because <laughs> he's got this way of, of saying a lot in few words, and none of his productions were particularly huge, and, um, but, you know, he really had a way of communicating emotion and, and creating a mood with, with few instruments and few mm -hmm. words, and there's something really powerful about that. Now, I, I'm always surprised when people sing like you do, like they're full out when you're seated. Uh, is standing not important? <laughs> I saw you just killing a song from the couch on one performance here. And I'm just, uh, it always surprises me. That's not important to you. You can stand up and have your diaphragm open and your lungs upright. <laughs> well, I mean, there are certain things that might come across differently when you're okay. standing. Um, but really, was that you can support your diaphragm from a seated position okay. as well. Um, and sometimes you show up to these things and the set is the set and, and right. people sit down and that's how they shoot it. So, right. I mean, uh, you know, depending on what I'm what I'm about to say, if it's something that demands that I must stand, then I'll, maybe I'll make it think about it. But hmm. generally speaking, uh, I'm happy to sit if that's what the if that's what the set uh, sort of <laughs> permits. Elise, uh, just before we let you go, I want to keep you on time, but uh, can you tease us with anything from the new upcoming album, you know, song-wise or talent-wise or anything like that? Well, there is one song that I'm really excited about right now, and it's called Better Side, and it's one that we've been performing live for quite some time, and uh, we just got off this tour across uh, Europe opening for the wonderful Rick Astley, actually. It was a great tour. Wow. And anyway, Better Better side every night just got such a reaction and it's just a joy singing that song so that's one that i'm really excited about and um i can't wait to share elisa legro thank you for time to you she is at the first canadian first ontario performing arts center right downtown st Catharines tonight uh what's what time's uh show time elise uh we hit the stage at eight eight o'clock and how can people get a hold of you or find your music if they want to check you out uh, EliseLegro.com and mm -hmm. all of the social media platforms. I'm very easy to find. Even if you spell my name really wrong, they, uh, Google <laughs> will correct you. <laughs> awesome. We'll break a leg tonight. Uh, I'm glad to see that you're in town. You know, I guess I must have said that I was going to this event months ago because I was completely surprised when I went, what? Coming up this week, it came up in my, my Facebook feed. So uh, I really enjoyed our, our, our first meeting there and the first performance that you did at TAPS. can't believe it was actually four years ago, um, but I've uh, been such a huge fan of you ever since then. So I wish you a lot of luck tonight, and thanks for uh, thank you, Jim. for everything that you do, and uh, I hope you have a great show tonight, and it's uh, well-received. I know it will be, and uh, yeah, I'm really proud of you for, from the standpoint of opening up for an act like Royal Wood. Uh, uh, yeah, you've you're making your strides so that's that's really cool to see so good on you just one day at a time <laughs> yeah all right well maybe one day we'll get you in for our own type of seller session when you've got some more time but uh, i appreciate the time that, that you do great. have tonight and uh have a great one tonight and thanks again for your uh, generosity all right thanks jim all right talk soon okay good night right, bye-bye elise legro that did not suck mj's running the board for us I uh, just make sure I've hung up a hair because she's muted and we're talking to me. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. First Can first Ontario Performing Arts Center tonight, downtown St. Catharines. Uh, she is opening for Royal Wood. Um, really cool to see Elise just hitting it. Um, like I said, you know, I saw her years ago when she came to TAPS. Well, who was it put on? Brian Johnson or who was it that brought her into town? He he live and intera interactive in the uh, 
Yeah, and uh, just completely blown away. And then once you get into her music, you just can't put it down. She's got some really solid covers. New album coming up next year. And so catch her tonight. First Ontario Performing Arts Center opening up for Royal Wood. Uh, Elise Legro, catch her on uh, YouTube. And she's got some really cool stuff there. So uh, give it a, a like and a share if you know anybody that would like the conversation that we had with Elise. And we'll talk to you. So, oh, who we got coming up? Uh, oh, in January, we got Jessica Wilson's coming up um, Thursday morning. We've got Jacob Bergsman's going to come in. We're going to we're going to hit the first My Son, the Hurricane album. We're going to listen to the whole thing it, in its entirety and kind of do what I call uh, air check, for lack of a better word, where we're just going to play the album and we're, we're going to talk over it. And he's going to discuss because it's been such a long time since. My son, the Hurricane, put out their first album. Uh, and it's going to be pretty cool to revisit some of the lyrics and some of the meaning behind the songs and, you know, some of the performances where they did them live and things like that. So Jacob Bergsman will be in Thursday with me. Um, that's going to be cool. He's bringing his boy with him, Frank, which is, to me, just like a little miracle child. Uh, <laughs> it's so beautiful. So he's actually going to bring Frank down with him. Um I don't know if Frank's going to make the show or not, but uh, he will be right here with us in studio. So uh, look for us on Thursday. Who else are we working on? Oh, I can't, I can't jinx who else we're working on. But uh, yeah, Jessica Wilson has got a new album. She's actually rebranding and doing, you know, just changing completely uh, the style of music that she's normally done. Um, and she's going 80s synth pop, if you can believe that. So hey right up my alley i don't know if she's gonna maybe do some covers of yaz or depeche mode or uh, erasure <laughs> something like that but uh so jessica wilson's album coming out six days after her 23rd birthday now jessica played for me at 610 cktb she was one of my first guests actually page cop was my first guest at 610 when we had the jim fannin show going off there and sh she was 15 or uh, I said 16 on air but she said 15 so anyways many years ago sh then she had just won the um, Pitbull cover album or cover song contest with Ryan Seacrest so she got a lot of pub from that and um, so she's rebranding she's doing a little bit different style of music f from the 80s synth pop uh, standpoint or genre which excites me completely so her album drops as uh, she said last night, I think on Twitter, you can find her on Twitter, by the way, um, six days after her 23rd birthday, and she's, yeah, she's going at a whole new angle, so that's cool to see that she's still rolling, and she's got quite a following, and uh, so Jessica Wilson will be in just before that launches. Oh, somebody's doing a Christmas song soon. And I've got them booked, and I can't remember who it is or what her name is. And it's probably good for now. So, anyways, uh, we'll get a hold. I, you can find us on Facebook, or you, sh you may be watching us right there right now. Uh, but if you see anything you like, give it a share so your friends can see it, and uh, we'll catch you soon. Thanks, MJ. Matthew James Blake was the one of my last guests in here. He's uh, actually, you know, behind the scenes wearing the headphones and making sure my levels are right. And... Uh, not booking guests yet, but I'm going to get them on that. Maybe we'll get them on the road to selling sponsorships, too. Uh, thanks, Donnie Nesbitt, for your help getting us live over at, at rockourtown.ca. Hey, go check out rockourtown.ca. You know, I didn't really do this for a money-making opportunity. It it'll be great if it, you know, was sustainable. But rockourtown.ca is just 24-7, all Niagara music, 24-7. And some great bands. Um think maybe what we'll do tomorrow sorry thursday when we have bergsman for the next day or so i think i'll just play mice on the hurricane tracks over and over and over and over because people they come in they go out they come in they go out they're not you know sitting there listening to it for 24 hours a day like i sometimes do but uh so we did have a road waves marathon we had an air burger marathon we had an mj blake uh, matthew james blake marathon so i think coming up we're going to have uh, very soon uh, My Son the Hurricane uh, Marathon, maybe after or before. Anyways, check out rockartown.ca. Support your local artists, and uh, we'll check you soon.
peace out.